Okay, one more example awaits us here, and it's a very important one. Uh, and this example revolves around trying to do a nonlinear fit function. So if you remember, polynomials are very easy to fit because it produces a simple linear system of equations to solve. So we can fit any polynomial. We can also fit any kind of uh, exponentiated data, uh, data that's very easily because, in fact, we can just simply apply a log to the data itself and then get back to a linear fit. But what I want to show you is an example of something that we want to do that might be more uh, research oriented and sophisticated in the sense of trying to do uh, a fancier curve fitting uh, than, than, than those things allow. So I'm going to have some new data here and let me just show you what the data looks like. Uh, here it is. So you, this thing looks like it's zero, it comes up, and then it comes back down to zero. So, you know, still not that com uh, complicated of a, of a function in some way, but clearly not a linear fit, or even a parabola, which would try to do this, but it wouldn't catch the flattening out at the edges. And so I want to do something more sophisticated here. In particular, I would like to try to solve or fit the following function to this thing. Suppose I think that this thing might be a Gaussian. Now the problem with this is I'd like to try to determine A and B, but they, A and B now satisfy some nonlinear system of equations, which may have no solutions, one solution, infinite number of solutions, and so there's no principled way to get that out very easily. Okay? Uh, I have some idea about what A and B should be. They should be around values, uh, reasonable values might be, if I picked, I'd say one and one, and those aren't correct, but they're not too bad, or actually A might even be two, because this thing goes all the way up to about a height of two, two and a half. Uh, so, you know, you can start thinking about reasonable values of this, but how do I actually take that and apply it to this data set? So what I'm going to teach you about is the fmins search command, which is an optimization algorithm, and what it allows you to do is put in something that you want to optimize, and in this case we want to uh, minimize the least square fit error with this function and this data. So we're going to go ahead and apply this, and you're going to see that we can get a pretty good curve fit from this. And this is very generic now, because once you have this down, now you can do much more sophisticated functional forms. All right. So let's go and start programming this up. So you remember, we're going to try to uh, minimize L square, L, uh, L2 error, which is going to take this minus the actual values, square it, sum it. That's what we need to minimize. Just keep that in mind as we go forward in this. OK, coming back here to the algorithm. Uh, I'm going to, it's a very simple code structure with fmin search. And here's how it works. I want to get out these coefficients, a and b. So let's make a vector of these coefficients, but it's going to be a and b. So I'm going to say fmins search. That's the name of the command that we're going to use. Fmin search is going to call on a function. And in this function, you're going to define what you want minimized. Okay? So we want to minimize the error. So there's going to be a function that's going to have this minimized error. So let's call it Gauss fit. And so it's going to be some function, gaussfit.m, that we're going to have to make. And when we make this function up, we have to define the error in there that we want minimized. Okay. And we're going to send in uh, some guesses about the values of a and b. Now, this is very important. This is a nonlinear uh, space or nonlinear uh, set of equations we're trying to solve. This is going to be the most important part of Fmin's search in many ways, which is, what are your guesses? The guesses become important. I'm going to pick A is about 1 and B is about 1. Uh, are these reasonable? We'll see. Uh, we're going to play around with that a little bit later. But in many times when you do the nonlinear fitting, that, that's going to be the most important step, is figuring out good guesses for this nonlinear fit. Because in fact, a lot of these systems have infinite number of solutions. And what you want is the global minima not some local minima. 
Okay, so that's going to be an important uh, thing to recognize uh, early on. Now, typically in the FMIN search world, uh, the way this command works, uh, you're going to come in, you're going to uh, you're going to send in your functions here with some options. Now we're, gonna, we're not going to enact any options. You know, the options are things like I can change the tolerance setting, how many iterations, maximum number of iterations to convergence, things like this. So I'm not going to do any of that. So for instance, it has default settings for it's going to iterate to try to find a solution to some accuracy and then stop. So I'm not going to play around with any of those. So I'm just going to leave that blank. That's where the options dialog box is. And then I can pass in X and Y. Okay? So that's my data. My data is an X and Y, so I'll go ahead, send in my X and Y values after the options. And then what we're going to do is, is start playing around with that. Now, in addition to this, I now need a right hand side function called gaussfit.m. I need that function. So let's make a new file function. And this thing is called, what did I call it? it we're going to evaluate the error, Gauss fit is going to be the name of this thing. And what I'm going to pass in here is my initial guess, let's call it x0. There's some options that come in, but then I'm passing my xy values. Those are going to be my, uh, my, my data that I pass in. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the basic setup. And all we have to do here is evaluate the error, okay, the least square fit error. All right, so how are we going to evaluate that? Well, let's write down the formula for it. The error is pretty simple. If you remember, it was the sum of the square of the differences of all those uh, of my function form minus the actual data values, okay? So the way this is going to work is you're going to say, well, x not 1, that's my a value here, and this is x not 2, okay, times, I have this Gaussian, x not 2, right, times x squared minus y. So that is the function, and let me close this off because I have to basically Square that, right? So notice what I did here. This is a times e to the minus bx squared minus the actual values squared. So that is the least square fit algorithm. And what this algorithm is going to try to do is you're going to send in values of a and b, which are 1 and 1 initially. So come here and say, okay, let me calculate what that is with your data x and y. And now it's going to have, it has an iteration algorithm that's going to adjust the values of a and b to try to find the minimum solution. That's the way the algorithm works. It's as simple as that, okay? So let's save this. Save as uh, gaussfit.m. Save. And now I can come back to test curve. And let's just see if this thing runs. Oop. Okay, it ran, but now we have to plot it. All right, so let's go back and plot it. In fact, we can look at what COAF are. What did it give us? Okay, here are two values that came out of the algorithm. 1.8733, that's the A value. The B value came out 0 0.9344. So let's plot what those look like in practice. Okay, so my, now I can say, well, my X2 values are going to be go from negative 3 in steps of 0.1 to 3. And my Y2 values is going to be, uh, so if you remember here, a is equal to the first component of COF, B is equal to the second component of COF, and so my function is A times negative B times x2 squared. I just define the function, and if I put a hold on to the plot, I can now plot x2, y2, and let's make that in magenta with a line width Two. Okay. Let's see how we did. There's how we did. It's kind of as simple as that, except for the guessing part. 
This is a very simple example. I picked a guess of 1, 1. Let's play around with what happens with those guesses. Uh, we'll see if this one, how, how poorly this one does, but here's my guesses. Uh, I could have guessed, okay, how about an uh, amplitude of 0.5 and a um, uh, width of, let's do 0.1. Still does okay. So this is maybe not the best example because, in fact, this one seems to be very robust. But when you do more complicated systems, the guessing becomes one of the most important parts of the entire process. This curve here is your best fit function of this form to the data you have. Guaranteed. It's an optimization algorithm. It converges onto that. And so you can start seeing that, hey, I could do more fancy uh, curve fits and nonlinear curve fits. This is solving a nonlinear system of equations for you, and it's very powerful. Fman search is, is just a fantastic uh, optimization routine that's very easy to access. And notice that we're using this optimization not to sort of say, hey, find the minimum values of this. We're using it to minimize the error, which is associated with this least square fitting procedure. Okay, uh, that is it for sort of the curve fitting. We've done now nonlinear curve fitting, least square polynomial fitting, as well as interpolation. And all three methods are available to you. Uh, MATLAB has a whole suite of these simple to use uh, curve fitting tools that now you have access to as well and you can play around with in looking at data.